This episode of Strange Love brought to you by Treasure Licious. Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to the most special After Hours edition of Strange Love Live ever. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, even though I didn't say it last time, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. Oh my goodness, Dr. Normal is loud. Yeah. And we should say uh, hello to Cyborg pre partiers. Hello, Cyborg Come on, guys. Partiers. Not only are we live, but we're live on location this time. And the band has stopped playing and, for a while. And the band downstairs has stopped playing for a few moments. Um, right this very moment, and for the duration of After Hours, we're joined by Amber Case. Hello, hello. Um, and this is what I like to call our speed dating version of After Hours, because we are going to have six guests in approximately 60 minutes. And our first guest is Bill DeRushi. Did I say it right? That's fine. That's fine with me. No, no, say it. I want everyone to know the right way to say it. Bill. Okay, Bill. We're joined by Bill. Hi, Bill. He's Builder (laughs) on Twitter. B-I-L-L-D-E-R. That's correct. And we have you on the show because you're one of the the speakers at Cyborg Camp. That's true. Speaking tomorrow morning. Are you the first speaker of the day? Am I ever? You're the first speaker. Okay, I'm the first speaker, yes. So you have to be all bright and early. 1045. Right and oily. What are you, uh, what's your speech title? My speech title is, if I remember it correctly, is Machine Language Extending Human Language. All right. Or does it? It does it. Yes. There's some bad wow, noise going on. Killer feedback. That's some quality feedback. Nice. I like it. Uh, oh, oh, that's much better. The uh, perils we're, of being we're, a we're, cyborg. Yeah, we're working, we're working on it. We're pulling yeah. down the mains. So. That is the cyborg angle. It is a cyborg. Getting the feedback. Right. Right. Cyborgs do this sometimes. Before cyborg camp happened, did you think much about being a cyborg or cyborgs in general? Uh, Not by name. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you you watch all the movies. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, there's some cyborgs. That's pretty cool in the movies. Um, But it really wasn't until Amber, like, kind of almost took a twist on the word cyborg. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, yeah, people, technology, we're intertwined. We're doing the same thing. God damn it, I'm a cyborg. (laughs) Cyborg, too, damn it. I, I don't have the uh, stereo jacks on my neck yet. I'd get them. But the night's early. So. Yeah, I would get them. Is anyone out here offering uh, to, to do implants tonight? I, I don't know. Nah, maybe after hours. But wait, this is after hours. But I right, don't right. Know anyone. Well, get in line. Oh, there's a line forming. So oh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. So if you could get one cyborgian implant, what would you get? Oh, man. I wasn't prepared for that question. Cyborg implant. Understanding any language. Ooh. That's a great one. That's a nice really one. Any good language. One. The auto translation thing. Right. Would be really nice. Don't you think it'd be pretty funny though? Like I mean, you know, like for instance, the Babel fish. That's it doesn't what I was really exactly right. thinking about. Yeah. <laughs> the Babel fish. I'll just stick it in my ear. <laughs> you know, you'd have this thing like your toupee is made of astroturf. Like when you're really trying to. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be about 10 years from now, I think. Right, right. I'll get the Astro Turf to paid in about 10 years. But right, right. Before that, I'll get the Babel Fish, yeah. Yeah, the Babel Fish, yeah. yeah. So, so perhaps. That'd be nice. So, so what's your first implant? My first implant. I want to be able to think and have it done. Just think and tweet. Think and tweet. Ooh. But would you ever leave this lovely couch? Oh, no, no, no. I'd be walking around all over the place right. reporting on what I was tweeting. Just I'd be like some sort of uh, just checking. Know, reporter and things like that. All right, just checking. Yeah, yeah. What about you? I'd have the direct internet link to my brain. I couldn't help it. That would be Very nice. similar to the think and tweet. I just would want to be able to think it and have it present in my, in my line of vision. Maybe close my eyes, but I'm not sure because I still like to walk. Yes. And, and no, I probably would not get off the chair. <laughs> <laughs> what would you... Uh, would you use the internet differently than you do now if you had a direct internet link to your brain? I think it would be easier because right now I have the internet almost all the time. Either I have my computer or I have my iPhone. And, and usually any given day, the longest period of time I'm not on the internet is when I'm sleeping or 
and in my wakeful hours, it's it, I know it's sad, but in my wakeful hours, the longest period of time I'm not on the internet is usually when I do the show. So what if you could broadcast your dreams to YouTube and people could watch your dreams? I would. And then comment on them. Yeah, I, I would because I'm a sick, sick individual. I couldn't help it. I, I have a blog. I write about personal stuff on my blog, so I don't think that would phase me. Right. And then somebody else could dream, post that as a response to your dream. Exactly. And then it gets all weird. That would be very strange. Maybe they could dream inside your dream and then dream about that dream and then comment about the dream inside your dream inside your dream. That would be awesome. And, and then wake freaky. up and have breakfast. Yeah. Ooh, I like mm. breakfast. Does breakfast. everyone like bacon? Wait, are there any vegetarians on the leather couch? Not this year. Not <laughs> Is this, this year. actually a leather couch? Is it? <laughs> I think so. Is Let it? me see. Are we surrounded by dead cow? Yes, that's a dead cow couch. Wow. Okay, I guess so. Yes. Feels good. So now, you're known for talking about the history of the button. Yeah, I, I run a blog. I run a blog. <laughs> well, lately it's been more running than writing, quite frankly. I got some nice feedback going. Um, everybody's a critic. Yeah, I run the history, his, history of the button. Um, so what I like to do is, I like looking backwards. And looking at the history of technology and try to understand like you know where we got to where we are now you know I love that everybody is you know future 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 what's going on but I find a nice little niche to just look backwards because nobody's looking backwards so it's this great wide open field um, and so I look at the history of technology and I, but I did focus on the button because it's this one little weird thing that shows up everywhere and it's the center of how we interact with technology and it's, it's boring but it's fascinating because it's boring and it's also completely prevalent now, let me ask you a question, and it might seem like an asinine question, but do you think there's a, a correlation between an actual physical, tangible button that closes up your clothes and a button on the internet? The clothing button and, or, or internet or any kind of technology pushing Anything button. you push, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, there's completely a correlation. Wow. Um, you people are loud. You should be having less <laughs> of a good time out there. Um, Stop having fun. <laughs> There's, there's definitely a correlation between the clothing button and the technology button. Mostly because it, the first buttons, technology buttons, were called push buttons because they're little small circles. Yeah. Clothing buttons are little small circles and technology buttons were little small circles. But they called them push buttons to distinguish them from the clothing buttons because they had no other good word for it. Oh, it looks like a thing on my shirt. I guess I'm going to push it. I mean, that's about probably as brilliant as it gets. But now we're stuck with it. Yeah. What about the future of the button? For instance, well, the button, I mean, in, in early industry, the button was this enormous thing, and you had to push it, and it was there in reality. Right. And now the button is this liquid thing, this iPhone-type right. situation. I mean, I've got, you know, oh, no, 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 don't look at Twitter, Okay, so no, I've no, got, you know, 20 Twitter, buttons there, oh, there's 16 more buttons there, oh, 16 more buttons there. Right, they're liquid. Well, they're not even, you know, yeah, it went, from, it went from a tangible yes. button to a liquid button. So the, what the defines buttons. a button? A button is... Something that you touch to make technology go. I want this to happen. It could be a physical depression and a piece of plastic and a spring, doesn't matter. It could be this completely fluid graphic behind glass. It's still, I want that thing to happen. But do and you so, enjoy the clicky noise when it <laughs> Well, there's always that kind of satisfaction, I mean, sure. I mean, that's what's it's kind of weird about this situation is there's that not quite that satisfaction. You don't know you really pushed it. And that's just, it could be just a generational thing easily. No, but it's still make technology go with about as simple as motion as possible. So the button may go away physically, but it'll live conceptually. Do you what, think a button will ever be an error where it'll just be a gesture and that makes technology go? Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, yeah. Okay. Blah, that'll happen. And then again, then, but is this a button? It's hard to say. You know, or is it still, it's a place to interact. I'm, I'm curious about the new BlackBerry interface, right? The clicky, clicky. With a click, a, a kind of right. a click, kind of a tactile interface. I haven't tried it. A little vibration? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it, it seems like, you know, why do that? Why not just change the, the interface? Or is that just to make us feel better? It's kind of a, I would say it's a, a generational band-aid. You know, people are, you know, are used to having that, that actual, that physical, tactile response. Um, but this could be just a little too weird. 
you know, a little too, you know, having no physical response. I got you know, used I, to it. After as a while. long as as long as the sound after is on, as long as the sound is on, I'm okay. But it's still weird for me uh, when I have the, the sound turned off on my iPhone to hit the button and have nothing happen. So you want that feedback? I do. I enjoy the feedback. Ah. I thrive on it. You thrive. You thrive <laughs> on the little clicking sound. I, I really like, especially when I'm typing. I, I really enjoy the typing clackety, sound. Clackety, 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 I loved clackety. typewriters when I was a kid. So. What about haptic feedback? With an actual button, you feel the button, but mm. on uh, you know an iPhone, you don't feel the button. Right. What That's about why you the, need to hear it? Right. The dissolution yeah. of haptic uh, response. Does that affect your ability to interact? Well, it definitely means you can't. A good example are remote controls that are touchscreen remote controls. If you're on your couch and you want to go channel up, usually you can just do it by feel. And that's a, I don't, you know, up, 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 down, down, down. With this, you have to look at it. You have to go, okay, here's the up button. You know, and that's, you know, that's a problem. I mean, that's why in some situations, touchscreen just does not work well. In some situations, it does. But I'm looking forward to the day when, you know, surface technology shows up where physical shape is dynamic. It's coming. Exactly. Give it five, give it ten years, but it's but it's coming. Or you can so, download a new shape from the internet. Yeah, or it's contextual. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're on a certain menu or whatever the situation is, you know, three buttons are here. You're somewhere else in the application, and two buttons appear. And it's on its way. It's not next year, but it's on its way. And then things get really, really strange because then this couch can be interactable. You know, this notebook, the the, the cover can be interactable, and then. Then it's all just wonderful chaos for interaction designers. Then it's just wild, wild west as far as design goes. I love me some chaos. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I've really enjoyed hearing some about the button, but we're on our strange love after our speed That's dating. Right. So I'm going to have to kick you off the couch and bring That's on fine. our next speaker. All right. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Cammie. Cyborg Cam tomorrow. It's going to be fun. Bill, it was awesome to have yeah. you on the show. Thanks. All right. And now... Oh, we're going to bring in a little DJ music. Very yes, speak. very very momentarily as we as we change our guests, we're going to have some music. We were potentially, but maybe we're not. It's I, coming. <laughs> it'll Trust happen. Me, it'll be there. It was working in rehearsal. There we go. Live. Hello, hello. And now, Strange Love Live after our speed dating cyborg camp free party edition. We've got the lovely and talented with her very loud microphone or headphones. So, I don't, Whoa, oh my go. goodness, let's get some levels. We have Leah it's Hollander, sometimes better known as Miss Burroughs. And she's also one of the featured speakers tomorrow at cyborg camp. And Leah, sweetie, baby, who I don't even know. I know. What, um, we don't fix that. No one knows anyone here. Yeah, no. it's, it's extremely isolation. We, uh, we're not friendly or anything. Uh, Miss Burles, Leah, darling. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> what is it that you're going to be talking about tomorrow at Cyborg Camp? Okay, tomorrow. Uh, more than anyone else, I think yours is a personal talk as well as, as, as well as a technological talk. It's uh, glaringly personal. There's, it features more than one photo of myself, in fact. Hey, okay. <laughs> it's after hours, it's pandemonium. Sorry about that. So what are you going to talk about? I'm talking about, what am I talking about? How being a cyborg keeps me alive. It's a very exceptional talk. You even made an advertisement. I did. Well, I put it on YouTube and I linked to it. And everyone watched it like a billion mega amounts of times. Because it's brilliant. I only saw five views. It was such a cute ad. I watched it. It was adorable. I I watched it on Facebook. It was very high quality. There was Facebook. You did a multi-level media marketing without even knowing it. Well, well. You did the future of advertising. I wanted to, once I put it on YouTube, it was so easy. I got a little addicted and I wanted to see how I put it on. You're a media whore. I, <laughs> I've learned from you. <laughs> 
So tell us about, tell us a little bit, without giving your whole talk, because we don't want to give everything away for free. Right. <laughs> Why buy the cow? Right. You can right. get the milk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, how, how does being a cyborg keep you alive, babe? Well, I'm going to talk about what it's like to be attached to an insulin pump 24-7. And I'm going to have some lovely personal photos. And, yes. Um, how personal? Um, pretty personal. Under the clothing personal. Yes. They're not that sexy, but... And I'm going to have a box of surprises to show you. There's going to be a science experiment. I heard surprises. Yeah. People, people love surprises. People are going to get to handle things. They are yeah. going to get to handle things. And push buttons. Bill was just yeah, talking about buttons. buttons. Oh, Bill would be proud. And the buttons they get to push actually have a lot of good feedback. They'll beep and do things. So we all want to know, and I'm sure we'll find out tomorrow, what it's like to be a cyborg. Is it normal reality, or is it slightly different? I do think it's slightly different, actually. Yeah. Oh, and the other thing I was going to talk about is the burning question whether or not cyborgs have sex. There's That'll two be... slides of that. <laughs> two, two slides of sex. About cyborgs all right. Yes. Sex. Yes. Well, we're all prepared, I think. I hope so. <laughs> They'll be right before lunch. Everyone will be. Uh, they better be, or they're going to be in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Anyone leaves early to go to lunch. I'll find them later and hurt them. You'll hunt them down. And oh, I need that gun thing. And force them to know whether or not cyborgs have sex? No, because if they leave early, they won't find out. So you'll torture them with their lack of knowledge? Yes. They'll always be questioning. So if someone were so inclined to find you on the internet, say at Twitter, where would they find you? Um, on Twitter, I'm at Miss Burroughs. My blog is arnfrow.blogspot.com. I am the brains behind treasurelicious.com. Treasurelicious! Uh, treasurelicious. And I brought some stickers if anyone wants them. Yeah, if anybody wants a Treasurelicious sticker, come on up and get one. But maybe in a few minutes. Yeah, <laughs> not, right, not right, right now. Um, is there anything else? I don't know. I don't want to give much away. You should want to I pull it out? out? It's going to be an amazing, incredible experience. No, I think you should keep some of it a surprise. Everybody knows kind of what you're going to talk about. That's okay. okay. Um, uh, it's I'm still okay. trying to decide what to wear. I don't know if I should wear something where I can't show you stuff or I should wear something. I think you should wear something where you can. So a skirt or pants and a top so that you can show them. I think you should show them your implant. <laughs> that would be cool. People would take pictures. I think you should. I really, I think you should. All right, yeah. fine. And you right. might need to tell me what, what uh, color your, your uh, piece is so that I can pass that information. Different blue today. It's blue today? Yeah. I have to check. Okay, well, I think in our crazy speed dating yes. Strange Love Live, we're ready for our third guest. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. It was I wonderful hope to have you. Again. Mm, maybe I'll think maybe. about it. Ooh, pretty music. Here's one. Here's one. I can't wait to see all the pictures from tonight.
Okay. And now we have our third guest of the evening, Ward Cunningham. Uh, good evening. Welcome to Strange Love Live. Uh, it's great to be here. Now, I have to note, aside from the fact that he's the only person I've seen with a cool, like, cyborgian attachment this evening, he has an awesome little blinky light. What is it doing? It's sending a message. What is the message? I can't say. You have to, oh, uh, brilliant. that's uh, for you to uh, study and find out. But it is in a, in a traditional code that is easy to uh, understand. Is it, is it uh, like a Morse code? It is Morse code. Yes. Nice. Staying me are, in my Morse peop- code lessons. <laughs> there is are, it SOS? <laughs> there, are, there are people who could look at the thing blink and read the code. As a, a, uh-oh. <laughs> We're getting shot by <laughs> Nerf-type structures. <laughs> I get the feeling that they're not excited about Morse code. <laughs> I think they're trying to emulate Morse code with shooting. I see. I didn't, I didn't admit in Morse code yet, but... Uh, but this, uh, the same program is, uh, was taken by the, uh, uh, the Graffiti Research Lab Excellent. in, in uh, New York City. Graffiti, at, Palm Pilot Graffiti? No, no. It, it, these are people who are developing open source technology for uh, taggers in New York. Oh. Right, and they developed this thing called the Throwy, which is a bright LED and a battery and, and a magnet, and they will litter New York with... Uh, ecologically sound uh, illuminated graffiti. So that's what's appearing on all these walls and these videos that I see in Graffiti Research Lab. Yeah, that's right, but but theirs didn't blink. So what I did is I added the computer to it to make it blink, and I did that as a hack on a Sunday morning, and I just happened to have a computer that just happened to be programmed, that just happened to be solderable on top of one of their projects throwy so we call it a throwy talk nice. and i presented it to them on sunday morning and have been a good friend with the graffiti research lab ever since <laughs> nice and so this thing in your ear right now it is the same computer i just had another one i just borrowed it out tonight and put it on a circuit board i thought the circuit board was a nice touch you know the the uh, prototyping board it's a very small circuit board did you get it from the guy who makes the mini circuit boards I, 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 SparkFun. SparkFun's a great source for electronic things, and, and I'd never seen one until I saw it there, but I liked it so much that I bought uh, 20 of them. Nice. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm loaded with little, little protoboards. I mean, usually you try to get really big ones, and then you end up making big projects, but I don't want big projects because they take a long time. I want a project that I can go down after dinner, make something, Come to you know a cyborg pre-party and get some respect, you know, for uh, <laughs> yeah. for yeah. making an LED blink, right? We like hey, our hey. blinky light. <laughs> yeah. So you're one of the featured speakers at Cyborg Camp tomorrow as well. I am looking forward to it very much. What is your talk about? I want to talk about uh, seeing, and seeing is something that I learned when I studied photography. Uh, seeing is where you become aware, like. Like in front of us here, there could be a thousand photographs waiting to be taken, but most people can't see them, so they're never going to take them. Right. So you have to study seeing. And, you know, I was learning photography, and I learned that I should study seeing, and I discovered that that was actually a lot more fun than photography. I kind of stopped photography and would spend my time, you know, kind of, you know, manipulating the light or, or doing this thing and whatever, just trying to see what's around me and remember it. But what I've done over the years is I've taken that same principle and applied it to computer programming, where instead of trying to see the photograph in front of me, I try to see the computer program in front of me, or the computer program that will let me see something about the environment. So I do a lot of like time-lapse exposures, time exposures, but instead of using a camera, I use a computer to record and then play back. And so I have uh, uh, some samples of things I've done with, with uh, uh, looking at light, the daylight in my backyard over a period of years. Oh, wow. And you can see things over years that you wouldn't expect to see. And I won't say any more than that, except that you'll see them tomorrow. Uh, I've also uh, been fascinated by ocean waves 
because just like light is wave energy from the sun, you know, the ocean waves are wave energy from the storms in the Pacific. And, and if you record them over a long period of time, you can visualize them or sonify them or oralize them. And so I've done that. And so uh, I'm excited to, uh, to play a little recording. And you'll see what uh, ocean waves sound like if your ear just happened to pick up waves directly. And uh, in, in a couple more. So, so I think they'll, they'll be good. But what's, what's, what's really the theme is that, you know, it's easy to write a computer program. It's not that easy. But, you know, I've done a lot. I'm pretty good at it. So the computer is my camera. And I just look at the world around me with this attitude of trying to see the picture that other people don't see. And then I write the program that develops that picture. And that's, you know, a lot of fun. It's a great way to, it's a great activity. And that allows other people to see what you're seeing? Oh, as other people see what I'm seeing, lets me see what's there, you know, because I, all the time I would watch the waves come, and I wonder, well, if I could hear those waves as a tone, you know, because it's like one after another, that would be a, it would be like a hum or a whine or a pitch. It'd be a note. And it turns out it's not so much like a note. <laughs> you know, it's a little different than a note. But you can hear the different storms. I figured out how to do it in stereo. <laughs> Right, so I get this stereo view from the ocean waves, and I can hear storms go by over a period. I squeeze one month into about 30 seconds. So you can listen to a month of weather in 30 seconds now. Is that cool? That is very cool. We think it, it could be cool. We'll have to wait till tomorrow to find out if it was actually cool. Pretty epic. Though, I'm excited right? anyway, to To even think about something like that. So right, and, 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 to, and to dare to call it seeing. Right, you know, instead of like screwing around with it's like audio. synesthesia. Yes, it's great. There's more than one way to look at seeing. I mean, you also people in the past have been called seers when they seen into the future, heard in the future, felt into the future. That's true. And I think that's a, I think it's actually a very appropriate way to phrase it and to look at it. I worked with a fellow who was blind, and he had learned to use visual terminology for every other sense that he had. Like, he would pay attention when he walked across the parking lot on which side of his face was warm so that he would walk in a straight line because that way he would be aware of the sunlight. But he would say, oh, I saw the sun and you know, because he just wanted to use that terminology. But it makes, people, it makes other people feel more comfortable, too, because you're relating to them on a level that they're comfortable with, even if you don't have that... Same absolutely, association. absolutely. But what I like about the word is is that it's part of a metaphor, uh, which is uh, thinking is seeing, right? When yeah. we when we talk about a, a a bright idea, we're using that visual metaphor of thinking is seeing because if it's bright, then you can, you know, there's a yeah. lot of light in it, yeah. or 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 or, or uh, a, a, an explanation that's clear, a clear. A clear explanation is one that it's not cloudy or muddy. Yeah. Right? right? So this is all... And, and if you think about it, of course, seeing makes sense. Because if I want to understand what you're thinking, I'm going to look right at your eyes. Yeah. Right? Because somehow your eyes are the closest thing for me to be able to see into your brain. Yeah. They convey more yeah. than anything else. Right. So, so thinking is seeing works. So, so I use the word seeing for thought experiments, right? And, and, and it's also just something, it's a word that comes from, you know, I think artists, you know, I, I'm not a painter, yeah. but if I were, you know, I think that a painter has to see the painting before they start to. That's true. Well, we're about to wrap up this particular portion, but I have to note before you go that you're wearing Crocs. <laughs> I'm wearing, oh yeah. But well, you're wearing the stealth Crocs, you're wearing the black Crocs, so they're kind of, I, I refer to them as stealth Crocs. These were uh, uh, my son's, mm -hmm. got them for his birthday, and he said, those weren't <laughs> the ones I wanted. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'll take them. And they're great, you know. And, and they're really comfortable? Yep. Yeah. And do you, yeah, do you I, bike I, in I, these, too? What's that? Do you bike in these, too? No, no, I, uh, well, I, I got uh, hardcore bike, bike shoes. Well, you know, I, I mean, if there was a way to put a cleat on there, you know, one that wouldn't, uh, <laughs> you know. we. find them. 
Well, one of those, you know, tough in the rain is what uh, we got to be. Well, Ward, if someone wanted to find you on the internet, where would they go? Oh, uh, C2? C2.com. The shortest domain name? Yeah, you just type the letter C and the number 2 into the location bar and you will be there. Do you ever want to do a, a URL shortening service out of your site <laughs> because you have a short domain? Well, I did, I did want to do a tiny URL once, and I thought, well, this is crazy. I could write my own right. and have a tinier URL, yeah. so I did. I wrote my own tiny <laughs> URL so that I could have tinier URLs and tiny URLs. So how's that Very for nice. a nerd? That's, that's excellent. That's, that's the kind of stuff I do, and I don't know why I do it, but I can. It just happens. Yeah, so, so c2.com, uh, there's, you know, for the cybernetic, I do have this little cybernetic thing. This computer I, is is of a class of computers I call sideboards. Sideboards. It's like like they were supposed to be little circuit boards. So it's it's like a variation on cybernetic circuit boards. Yeah. Or just sideboards. I like that. But if you Google sideboards, you will get to a part of my site that has a lot of electronic projects, including the source code for this little thing in my ear. And if you read the source, you'll find out what it says too. That's easier than uh, reading Morse code. I like how you document everything in a wiki form everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's extremely I, well documented. You can see everything that leads to everything. That's right. It, you know, it's, it's because I can't tell a real story, Joe, so I just say what I did. <laughs> nice. Well, yeah. Ward, it was lovely to have you on this evening. Okay. Well, I can't wait to see uh, uh, everybody tomorrow and show them my work. Yeah, Fantastic. Thank you I'm, so much. I'm excited to see your talk tomorrow. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Ward. Screw the top, yeah. yeah All right. I'm Is ready. It Go. Peso or paso, anybody? Peso, paso, peso, peso roller. Yeah. What's the thing? For those of you familiar with Strange Love Live After Hours, you might be aware that we always do the drink music portion of the show. This is the drink music. The majority of the alcohol provided this evening was from Widmere. And I don't know what kind of beer it was that they had, but yay beer from Widmere! Does anyone know what kind of beer they had? Anyone know what kind of beer we were drinking? It was Widmere beer. It was very good. Yay Widmere. What was it? Pale ale? An ale and a half of ice. Um, Cammy Chaos this evening is drinking yeah. Trader Joe's Coastal Sauvignon Blanc. And that is exactly what Dr. Normal is drinking We're, tonight as well. I think, I think I've been drinking the, the Peso Robles, which has been Paso amazing. I, I've been loving this all you night. Bet. Ooh, might have some dun, of that dun, after dun. the show. Cabernet. Can we it do is beatboxing? after hours, ladies and gentlemen. Is it possible? Can we what? do beatboxing? 
should. Uh, we could, but let's introduce. I'm just yeah. You need the headphones. I'm just thinking you're not getting enough doc normal screen time, right? So let's let's introduce our current our current guest, Will Norris. Yeah. Okay. Um, Will Norris actually has no affiliation with Sandboard Camp whatsoever. <laughs> right. However, we saw him in the office here at Vidoop, and and we wanted to have him on the show, so we grabbed him and said, Hey, come on the show, Will. Fair enough. What are you working on? Uh, so, yeah, I'm working on the Dupe. Uh, I work down in the San Francisco office. Um, there's just a couple of us down there. And we're primarily working on a project called DESO, um, which is basically an effort to kind of provide the same kind of applications that you see on Facebook and MySpace and all these things, but in a very distributed environment. So DESO stands for Distributed Social. Um, so you can imagine... The same kind of things you can do on Facebook, you know, sharing for, sharing photos with very specific friends and having kind of control over what is shared with whom, but doing that all with inside your own personal blog instead of having to have a, an account on, on Facebook or MySpace or one of these social networks. So kind of, uh, we kind of represent that, that individual who wants to have complete control over everything and wants to run it all on their own. Right now, we're, we're focusing on WordPress um, as a platform. So we're building lots of components on top of WordPress to provide this kind of functionality. Yay, kind of since we've got a new WordPress blog that you've set yeah. up. Yeah. Right. Are, are you all accepting open IDs on there? I, I don't know. Can we? Yes. We're, we're actually using the, the right. WordPress open ID Good. plugin. Is it yeah. WordPress 2.7? I haven't upgraded yet. Not yet. You should. That's my, that's be my weekend problem. Project. It's, That'll it's be a so future nice. episode. Yeah, it's right? my weekend project. I'm very excited about it. It's good stuff. What I'm going to do on Sunday. All right. So, what do you think about the future of OpenID? Um, you know, it's today has been a really exciting week, uh, just kind of for identity in general. You had Facebook Connect doing a, a big announcement. You had Google, uh, Google Friend Connect. Um, I, I think it's. I think the future is bright. Um, I, I think uh, Marshall Kirkpatrick, you know, here in town, uh, his article on Read Write Web this week was great, um, where he kind of analyzed the how Facebook Connect and, and OpenID are really working in the same space. But I'm, I'm not concerned at all about the 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 popularity of Facebook Connect and what they're getting. What are you guys doing? <laughs> What? See, see, you brought over this device. Yeah, you right? brought the you device. asked me a question, it's, it's and then the you downfall. go, okay, you know what? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm taking the gun. Oh, right. my God. He's, he's being the grown up. Stamp I, he's he's oh, wait, he's not being the grown up. I didn't say I was being the grown up. I just said I'm taking the gun. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh my You've been God, shooting the everybody have today. Well. The bullet. I have. I've, I know. I've, I've been you bring running this around. thing on, and then like you know, and it's after hours, and you're trying to talk about open ID, and people no, are shooting each other. You, you should have been here before hours. It was great. We I was. Were, I was setting this crap up. What well, did you? Did you, you were shooting us. No, but did you see no, our base? Our were baseball. Shooting us. No, it was great. We were shooting. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, you weren't doing anything we're just important. Like I mean, right, come exactly. on, right? Just, you were just Joe brought his tricaster to do. Right. It, I mean, like, what is that? A tricaster? Robotic I mean, come on. cameras. Jeez. I mean, what, I mean, what is this like cyborgs or something? Come exactly. on. Exactly. What the hell, man? Aim. We got people play pool. Oh, <laughs> hey, what are we doing? Okay, so the chat room wants us to stop the violence, okay? <laughs> Good chums, baby. You know, How many people are in the chat room? Who we got? Well, most Two? of the people who are normally in our chat room are, here are currently over there. So it's, it's, it's kind of a low turnout tonight. You know what? I think, I'm, I think I'm actually in the chat room right now. Oh, there you go. Yeah, see if Will Norris is in there. I'm probably, probably. signed in right now. I don't yeah. know. Maybe I logged out. I don't know. Okay. I was in there earlier. Hey! All right. So <laughs> we need backup. Okay. If anyone has another one of these guns, yeah, there's a second gun out there. Can there's someone give it to me? We need the uh, we need the I, gun. Really I'll be quick. really appreciative. This is a non-violent yeah, we podcast. We need to have an, an equality of ammunition to power. Stephen, I see you looking for the gun. No. Stephen Wally. Stephen, find the gun for me, please. <laughs> Nobody's got a pool cue in his <laughs> Okay, so, so <laughs> that was it. That's very to joust. Exactly. Okay, that, that was just it. Earlier, we were... Uh, Real men throw pool cues. <laughs> right, so... I like to smack people upside the head, not Chris throw Chris Pitzer and Stephen Walling. <laughs> <laughs> Could you please bring us a green air Could you gun? please bring us a green gun of, of uh, strange air plastic Have I, have I mentioned everything? Oh, yeah! oh, oh no. <laughs> I don't even know if it has any ammo in it, though. That's pretty epic. I think we're wasting all of our good time. We are. We're time. out. I'm out. I think there's one behind the couch, maybe. I don't know. Oh, 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 get it, Amber. Get oh, it. Hey. 
Have I mentioned yeah. all you kids need to wake up early to go to cyborg camp tomorrow? You should, or else you'll miss breakfast and your yeah. normal protein routine will be thwarted. You know what? I don't know how I missed the announcement. I'm flying back to San Francisco like early in the morning. Uh, I am totally going to miss cyborg camp. Why are you going to San Francisco? The party's in Portland. Because I live there? there and my wife is there. Oh, okay. And well, then by all means. Yeah. I mean, but, uh, I would have booked a later flight, but I... You can I, always I uh, tune in by live streaming. Yeah, I will streamed. certainly do that. Whoa. Is somebody shooting I, back at us? I found one. No, I found one. Over there. Oh, all right. They, they are all over the yeah, office. I tried to throw one at your head, but I missed, and I hit my husband instead. Oops. Okay. It, it happens. It happens from time to time. Sure. He was like, you know... Casualty of war. So yeah, so that open we'll, ID. Well, we'd like to have you on the show sometime. Maybe we'll have you Skype we in or we let will. us know when sure, you're going to be in Portland. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to. No, yeah, we should I'm, have him come I'm, up when he's in Portland. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm here every couple of months It's or so, more fun so. in our basement with booze. That's right. Hey. Yeah. yeah all right. Yeah. That's good. All, all right. right. Well, we're going to say goodnight to Will. Right. Good night, Will. And we're going to pull up Brom. Thank Brom. you for being here. Uh, yeah, Brom, don't turn your back on me. Brom, Patoyo. Patoyo, turn around. Please come to the front office. Uh, Come to the principal office, Brom. <laughs> I think you're in trouble. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure you're in trouble. Yeah. Get, yeah, yeah. Get if you don't here. come out here, you're Come going along, to. Uh, silly boy, it's your turn on the couch. Here, here. Thank you. Thanks, Will. Will. <laughs> right, we'll give you your gift. And this lovely, jazzy talk show music. It's being provided by Alan. Wow, this is great. For the music. Yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. It's like a real talk show. It's so refreshing. It's like All kids right. in their basement. All oh, right. no, that is our podcast, That's isn't it? Kids in our basement. All right, we've got... The chat room I have no microphone. Oh, do I have a microphone? You need a mic, Joe. All right, let's get Brom's headphones on. All right. Hi, Brom. Hello. How are Hello, you doing? Brom. I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. What, uh, what have you uh, been experiencing out there in that intense crowd so um, it's been an interesting conversation with uh, with anyone um, so I've been talking to basically a lot of people and uh, what what are you guys doing we're, we're uh, augmenting reality they're, they're turning this of into after hours yes, problem yeah. you know what we are the true after cyborgs. hours we are weaponized it's about cyborgs. time oh okay dun, dun. and what's more dangerous than a cyborg than a weaponized cyborg I don't know it's like the guy who sells uh, refrigerators to people oh, yeah. in Alaska Dr. Normal is showing us his tie I know you guys can't see it it's got a tie with the Terminator it's got the Terminator, Terminator. where do you find a Terminator 2 you tie? know what I have no clue <laughs> I, I found in my you. closet <laughs> Amber in my closet about being my married to Dr. Normal is last night I'm sitting there minding my own business and he comes downstairs and he waves this thing in my face. I have to tell you, I've been married to him for seven years. Damn you, Will Norris. Yes, Will Norris. <laughs> He's giving us all of his ass. At least it's accurate. Um, so anyway, I've been married to Dr. Normal for seven years now. Uh, we've been together since 2000. And this is the first time I've ever seen him wear a cyborgian tie. Yeah. Actually, it's probably the fourth time I've ever seen him actually in a tie. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And once was our weddings. I don't think that counts. So, wait. You wore a Terminator 2 tie at the wedding? No. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's the fourth time I've seen him in any tie. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. But now that you mention that, that might have been a good plan. Yeah, that I, might have been I, a good plan. I might plan. not have married yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be back. I don't want to shoot Miss Me, but she's in the way of Rick Jersey. And, and I mean, who had I the really great idea? Him. And who had the great idea of like, hey, let's make a Terminator <laughs> 2 tie in the first place? I mean, that's just ungodly. I have no idea where it came from. <laughs> Will Norris out of the ammo? Can we shoot Rick Jersey? I want I mean, to. He's in shooting distance. I want to. Well, now Will's in the way, and and Miss Me there, she's in front of. She, I don't want to shoot her. She's so sweet. I could shoot Reed, maybe. Oh, yeah, do it. Do it. Bring him over, Will. You gotta shoot like this so that the apogee goes high. My range is not good. Shoot like, shoot like this. Shoot higher than you My, might. Yeah, you know, Aim the for range. The, stars. the range is just not good. And now Reed is in the way. <laughs> All right, we'll get him hiding behind the column. We'll get him later when he least suspects it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've lost that behind the couch. Here you go, sweetie. So what are we what are we talking about here? What was the uh, what was the current? Brom, how many hours did we spend planning yeah, this yeah. event? What are you doing for for cyborg camp? All right, all right. So uh, basically, I've been uh, doing 
uh, a lot of the uh, community stuff for Cyborg Camp. So the community uh, outreach. Yeah, the community outreach. He's been doing outreach. the Cyborg Camp Twitter account, which is rocked awesome. Yeah. So if you see awesome. the Cyborg Camp Twitter account, that's I am the man behind the curtain. Woohoo! And uh, yeah. The great and mighty Oz. Yeah. There you go. And uh, yeah, so I've been doing that. I've been assembling the Net Vibe social intelligence dashboard. He's been uh, helping to monitor. With the, uh, the, the badges, that was good. Yeah, the badges, the stickers. Yeah, how's our swag going? Yeah, I want some it's swag. It's great, it's great. Can someone, can, have, can someone throw me a meringue? Yeah, can we can we have meringues yeah. here? Yeah, we'll, we'll take meringues being thrown at us, it's fine. Well, we're getting distracted anyway. So, uh, so swags, so... Swag. Tyler and CMYK, who kindly... Uh, printed the swag for us. Yo, and he, Dyna Graphics. And he, yeah, de- yeah. he designed the Woo! logo, right? Uh, no, Tyler Sticker. Tyler Sticker. Oh, I'm sorry. The team right. graphic designer You're extraordinaire. Right. I'm sorry. Has designed the logo for Cyborg Camp. Tyler yeah. CMYK printed, printed the thing, beautiful. And Tyler Sticker designed the logo. You gotta That's get right. your Tyler straight, dog. I know, it's I mean, tough. Sheesh. It's like the Nates, right? We have Nates and Tyler's. We have Nates. Coming out yeah. of our ears. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they're very helpful, though. I think all of our Nates are very oh, yeah, helpful. They're of course. And so are Amazing. our Tyler's. Right. Everyone with duplicate names is excellent. Is all there right. any more duplicates we have in the community? Cami. What are you eating on really? the There's air? There's two Camis. There's two Camis? Cavitin. Cami Cavitin. Oh, okay. yes, you're right. But what are you eating with on the air? I'm eating a meringue. Why? Because I asked for it and it was thrown at me by okay. a kind gentleman. Okay. I'll send it aside till afterwards. So okay, we need to speed date through Brom, and we actually, need to we get have our a, last guest. We have one more guest. Actually, we have one super special guest. Who? Oh, who? Alan Block, who's behind me. Oh Hi, yeah, Alan, Alan Block. Alan yeah. Block. Yeah. Hear your music, Alan. He's our secret DJ. DJ. Dun 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 dun. dun. Yeah. Cue the music, Alan. Alan is a Rails go. developer. You guys. Think that's awesome. Oh my God, this is great. That was very nice, Doctor. Aww, that's Thank you. so sweet. I didn't know it was that special. You're welcome. <laughs> welcome to the couch. I feel pretty privileged. This it's is really cool. You're not a vegetarian, are you? Um, <laughs> because you're sitting on, on an animal. I'm a guilty vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> you're sitting on a huge dead cow. Yeah. Why are you a guilty vegetarian? Do you eat I've been bacon? waffling lately. Oh, have you? I'm what do you mean, waffling? Yeah. It's Waffles true. are vegetarian. Yeah, they could be vegetarian. Sometimes they're vegan. Well... <laughs> Did I ever tell you the time I was in Copenhagen and they had the best Belgian waffles? I mean, with the oh my god, you could smell them Dr. down Norman, the street. We're not talking about you can put chicken on waffles. Never mind. Yeah. That's really we're not good. talking about Copenhagen. I, yeah, I don't like to mix my chicken and my waffles. Why are you guilty? You're waffling. Have you been eating meat? I like I like the ideal of vegetarianism, and I've been doing it for a while. But uh-huh. then it just sushi just it's oh the god, Achilles sushi. Heel, you know, there are two things. Three. There are three things that prevent me from being a vegetarian: sushi, bacon. Yeah. And ribs. <laughs> I was a vegetarian for a year when I was a teenager, and my father made barbecued ribs, and it was all over for me. That's a difficult yeah. experience. Yeah. That's very difficult. I'm going to sound heretical, but I don't get the power or the magic of bacon yet. I really don't. I know. Oh, but the uh, magic sprinkles, they'll show up at Master Bacon, and you'll master just have yeah. to. Is Scott uh, coming on the couch? Scott's. Scott is Scott's the next the last and last guest for yeah, the evening. Yeah, you so, can do the rebuttal. And I think we're going to talk about Master Bacon with Scott. So, Alan, tell us about the tunes okay. you were rolling, man. Oh, the tunes, the tunes. So, um, actually, I wanted to talk about something else. The tunes the tunes were great. You can go By audio. Because f- we have lots of content here. Yeah, audioformula.com. My friend Ken Miller and a bunch of other guys it came together, and, and basically they created almost a social networking site where composers come, they create their little audio bits and then they use a magical musical formula so that you can just throw these compositions together and create these dynamic mixes. So check it out, audioformula.com. It's free. Audioformula.com. And, wait a minute. Any, like a composer can come up on that? Any and, composer, yeah. Oh, they can, nice. A, yeah, 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 I it, like this. They can, and, then, and then they yeah. get the royalties. You know. Awesome. I wanted to talk about something, though, because I was, you know, I've been hearing this the entire time. And I, 
and and I liked how I mean when people think cyborg, right? They think Terminator. They think you know some guy with like a huge metal arm or something. I, I think Luke the Skywalker. Borg. Dun, dun. Yeah. I think the Borg. The, yeah. the big scary Borg thing, and I think just like you know being here, there's the recognition that there's something way more human to it than than anyone else sort of thinks about it. You know, it's 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 uh, there is the, the romanticism. So that's why I like I I wanted to. You know, there, there's another thing, it's a little play on words, but maybe it's not cyborg or the, the, the CY, but maybe it's something a little bit more abstract, right? It's something that's more, I think, it's more of our perception of what it means to have this, you know, non-human enhancement, you know? So I, I, I kind of say it's a cyborg with a PSY. It's like in our mind, right? Oh, right, because Twitter is like this mental communication. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's just all an interface to this type of experience or you know mediation, you know, uh, that we that we just want, you know, that we can't get through our own biology, you know. So yeah, I, I liked how you were you were saying earlier about how this isn't just like you know it's like how close are we to the technology, you know, and and when it's like actually implanted, does that make us a cyborg then, or were we a cyborg earlier, right? When we were just like in front of our computers communicating through these, I mean, look at look at this, look at this. I mean, we're we're talking to the internet. We're talking to like hundreds of people, right, thousands, different channels, millions. You know, through technology. You know, like I can't yell that hard. And through history too. I tried. I mean, this is there forever. <laughs> the world is small. You exactly. can stand on one side, whisper something, and be heard on the other. Yeah. I, it, it's like the modern day version of that game I used to play as a kid, Telephone. Did you guys used to play Telephone as right. a kid? Right, except more accurate. You don't exactly. come out with more like, right, like right. Well, Susie no, likes I mean, you and you come out the, spaghetti on your face. They hear something. the exact <laughs> words, but they still come up with their own interpretation. Right, of it. right. So. You're ex- exactly right. Yeah, it, 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 it kind of it comes to be more subtle in that sense that, yeah. that, that we're suddenly, we're our own sort of, uh, you know, perspective somehow influences the entire sort of conversation. And I, and I think that's cool. I, you know, and guys like Ward, Ward Cunningham, who who just has a new sort of perspective on things, can sort of revolutionize technology. You know, just kind, you know, just one separate little way of looking at. It. I th- I think it's really cool. I, and that's why I also just, you know, the entire sort of, for me, the abstraction into the mind of what it really means to be a cyborg is just, you know, enhancing your own experience. You know through whatever means, you know, it's sometimes people dwell on the, the sensorial thing, like, oh, I have to see it or touch it or, you know, f- you know, feel it or or smell it or something like that. Or just, I, I like to think, I just want to think it. So, yeah, I'm, so, so yeah, it's like earlier what you're it. saying, like, you know, I want the internet, you know, hooked up into me and that's like my, I, see, I, I was thinking about like, what if, what if there was some sort of silicon device or whatever, some some cyborgian device I could hook up and it's almost like like uh, if I wanted to think about something like you know what's pi or, or, or you know what were the the last you know presidents or what's the square root or something or rather so even like, more than I would, broadcasting what you're thinking it's you think it and getting it, the information I just think it need. and I just and it would just be like a memory and it would know? just automatically show up and then you'd be able to index it yeah, and then it would, and and it would also be um, relational to the situation that you thought it in. Yeah, yeah, like, right, right. Since you thought it in this situation with this input, we're going to give you this piece of information yeah. instead of the other one that has nothing to do with your yeah, situation. Yeah, it's totally relevant to the situation, to the context, and it just—it's so natural. It's like just thinking itself, but in fact, I'm like tapped into this entire right. cyber gnosis. You know, I kind of feel like that's the way with Twitter. For instance, I don't look up what's the best RSS reader for Mac. I go to search.twitter.com and say, what's the best RSS reader? And, and, but I say it in little chunks, right, that I right. know people have talked about. Yeah. And I get these reviews that actually mean something, that actually have nothing to do with marketing, but something to do with human experience. Right, right. And I get the, the correct thing based on that. I, I think that's, that's so cool because, to me, it's, it's the, uh, that collective engagement that is really compelling. Like, I mean, I could do everything by my, my myself, and I can have my own cybernetic enhancement. But when it suddenly you bring in other people, you know, into the equation, like, what if we start thinking each other's thoughts? What if, like, I start like, I wonder, I wonder what this place was like three weeks ago, and I suddenly download the memory of some guy who was here three weeks ago, and I almost experience it like he did. You know, but right. that's when individuality starts to fade out. Maybe, and or the collective. Maybe not, like, no, I mean, really, though. I mean, if you, 
if you can think about it and suddenly have the memory from other, from some other person, that's when you have a collective, and that's where it gets into the morgue. Well, yeah, 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 and that's the scary <laughs> but it's thing. Like, yeah. so, th- so there could be two ways. We could go like totally board collective, where it's like we kind of flatline, you know, our personalities and stuff. Or maybe there's a way that we can, instead of flatlining, and just enhance everything. So, so I could still retain my own individual identity. But then everything else sort of enhances my experience, so there's a certain sudden richness that I can direct into my own context. So this yeah. sounds like a lot of stuff that we are going to be talking about tomorrow. Yeah. But I'm not going to be talking. This is my chance. No, no, but you, but you can. Are you going to be there? Amber, are you going to talk about this? No, are you, you better be talk about Are you going to be there tomorrow? I, oh, yeah, I'm totally yeah, of there. Course. <laughs> write up a post-it, stick it on the post it. Oh, that's right. This is an unconference. Individual versus collective, right? It's like you have both, right? It's like the hybridization, right? There's both happening at the same time. So I get to go on my soapbox. Exactly. Get on your soapbox tomorrow. Because right now i got to kick you off my couch. Yeah. So we're going to we're gonna be there, and you're going to be able to talk about it. I like this couch. Thanks for being an awesome person. Thank you, Thanks, guys. Thank you, man. Thank you, Thank you so guys. much. It was awesome. I'm, I'm going to go turn on that jazz. No, we're going to go slowness. have the master bacon yeah. rebuttal oh, now. We have the last speaker of the night. You who, bacon boy. Get up here, Scott Caviton. <laughs> oh, I, I, heard, I heard a lovely little. Oh, wow. I can hear you guys. What's up? That's Dude, nice. what's up, Scott? I'm so excited. Yahoo. I have to say before we do anything else that Scott is going to be hosting Master Bacon and that makes him a wonderful person not just because he's hosting it but because when I very nicely pointed out that I would be happy to be a judge he didn't laugh at me he said okay Cammy." <laughs> hey you know what I come just on thought, I just tattooed thought ladies with cleavage I'm so stoked to be a judge at Master Bacon I just thought of something sorry that was out loud I know I'm, I'm it's lower. okay because we're in the age of the collectivism Hello. and you can think out loud okay. it's okay I've, met, good, I've good. met your wife the other Cammy. yeah and Technically, and she has. She's got some clean cleavage than you. Yes, she does. I was disappointed okay. to see the full T-shirt covering. It's definitely cleavage. after hours at this point. <laughs> have you ever, have you never seen good. Kemi Kavitin's cleavage? That's when the show gets good. Kemi Kavitin has some remarkable rack. Is it the same? Is it K A M I or K A M I instead of C? Yeah, she's got the, the double. True color. story. So duplicates in this community are excellent. I I actually I'm rather fond of Kemi Kavitin. It works. We have we have duplicate camis, duplicate uh-huh. Nates, yeah. duplicate. What is the, duplicate? Nate. We need duplicate Ambers. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we, had, we had Nates. We had. Uh, we, we we discussed another duplicate that we had. Who was it? We had the duplicate. We don't have duplicate Brahms. No, no, no. No, definitely not. There's more than one Scott, right? There's. I'm there's, watching you. There's several Chrises. <laughs> one of the Chrises. Several Chrises. Gun. <laughs> yes. I can't remember. You gotta keep an eye on that guy oh, and no. that guy. Which one? All of them. You have to keep an eye. There's on There's a of lot them. of guys here to keep an eye. Yeah, on. So there are a lot of people doing things. Be, before we do anything, we gotta give another shout out to the dupe for letting us trash their office. Sit here dupe in their corner. And by the way, this is uh, Scott. You're sitting actually in front of yeah. your office right now, <laughs> Scott and, and was you've been trying to get back to your office it. like all night. <clears throat> and ironically, if I was standing. And like five steps backwards, I'd be in my office. That's right. I saw you working like not not an hour ago. You were standing at your desk working. That's how I roll. That's just how I roll. That's right. And we're gonna keep the lights up for you and the PA, you're so good, you good. can just like. Yeah, you're gonna work, work all night. <laughs> yeah, you can just work, and yeah. it'll be it'll be excellent. Uh, can we, do you mind if I give a shout out a little bit? Yes. Shout out Go to, for uh, it. Master Please. Bacon. Yes. Master Bacon. Uh, January seventeenth. 2009. Uh, I have to say the venue is going to be changed because we're too, too big. People. 60 plus people. Yeah. Oh, is this because Scoble like uh, like tweeted it? Uh, so, well, you know, I'm psyched about that. Wow. Actually. What's the new venue going to be? That was awesome. What's that? What's the new venue going to be? I don't know yet. We're working on something. It'll be probably downtown, uh-huh. uh, probably on this side of the river. Yeah. West side. What's up? West side. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Hello. West anyway, side. so uh, I mean, uh, yeah. Master Bacon's coming up. Excited about it. I'm very excited. It's about gonna Master have Bacon. coverage by something that is not used to Portland. That's right. That's cool. But it's a secret, and you won't know unless you look at the comments. Oh on, my dear uh, Lord, that's a horrible noise. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. In this environment, we want him to do that. In the mic. <laughs> We've got the band playing. Right. 
But what a great place it is. We're between Backspace and Cube Space. That's right. And back yeah. again. Yeah. And the first live remote. And before we, uh, I gotta plug something that will. Uh, the song contest. Oh my Damn gosh, it. you people! I don't know if you're aware of this, but if you're listening to this podcast, there is a song contest. We're having a, you need to write the our lyrics to our second annual Chaos Christmas Holiday song. song Contest. This is where yeah. you write the lyrics. The deadline is Friday. So write that and then so go to Master Bacon. Go to the January. site and then go to Master Bacon. Bring Do me it. some bacon. I'm one of the judges. I will be eating your bacon. That's right. Excitedly. So write Just the song. Bring bacon Scott bits. and Verso. Are there That's any right. other judges? Right. Uh, well, I don't know if there's going to be any other judges, except that we're going to have uh, several different uh, sort of prizes, as it were. Uh-huh. For, for example, uh, worst or yeah, worst bacon pairing. That would be one. Yeah, yeah. Like what's bacon the worst and thing? yogurt. Apple pie? Bacon and apple pie? No, that, that I would, would be totally yummy. I know. Yeah. Bacon yeah. and they kibbles and They did it at Live at 7, right? I want the bacon and apple pie. That's difficult. I know. The gist In a is world of bacon, bacon, how can you... Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because I, I happen to know from personal experience making you a birthday cake that exactly. bacon and chocolate go together really well. Oh, oh yes. Let's see here. So, um, yeah. That's, the, that's a really difficult best, proposition. Best uh, uh, bacon veggie pairing. Ooh. <laughs> oh, God. I love bacon. How about best bacon vegan pairing? Yeah, totally. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, Perfect. Uh, best junior bacon pairing. And yeah, senior bacon pairing. Kids that might want to make some bacon treats. My, so my it's like my awesome kids are already talking bacon. about it. Yeah, yeah, my kids are like going. It's like yeah. mm, pie off, but with bacon. Yeah. With no, my, many categories. Do like you have my a son's like, can I put you know like bacon on top of my waffle? Like that's yeah. it. Really. What about bacon on top of bacon on top of bacon? I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to give out my daughter's secret recipe. Amber, you just won. But I'm just going to tell <laughs> you that, that, be that my daughter is putting bacon on another um, pig product. What about a, a live pig with bacon on top with bacon on no, top thank with you. bacon? No. A live pig? Uh, no one likes live pigs. Aren't there going to be live pigs there? It's, I mean, it's that's getting not a weird, you know what? The most animated bacon? I was chased down by a pig when I was a kid, so I find live pigs. Maybe that's why I take so much pleasure in eating bacon. <laughs> the I'm not fond of the live pig. The destruction. We, we got to get the Food Network out on this baby. Ooh, oh no, you don't even Alton know. Brown. There's going to be excellentness. We don't need the Food Network. Yeah, it, really? it'll, it'll be covered. Ass. It'll be it'll be set. Well, you know, you'll be you, you know Scott, you'll be the Bobby Flay of bacon. Oh no, on the I don't podcast, like Bobby man. Flay. Watch it's out. It's the least I you I could be hope many for. Things. Exactly. Let him be the Alton <laughs> Brown of bacon. Let him be the Alton, Alton Brown. Brown of bacon. I'll take the Alton Brown. Oh, Alton Brown. With Geeks. more hair. With we more love hair. Alton Brown, and, right? Geeks and, love yeah. Alton Brown. Yeah. We do. We love it. All right. Yeah, well, you we know, do. it's 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 wandering on over to midnight, and I think that we actually probably need to say goodnight to everybody. Yeah. Holy shit. This Good is night. great. Oh, sorry. It's, it's after, after hours. It's after hours, It's after hours. Man. Fucking it. Yeah, you can, yeah, we can say you all can, sorts of swear you words. Could, you could do awesome. the George Carlin bit and uh, it would be fine. Thank you to no, Badoop. <laughs> this is a great party. It looks Thanks like everybody's having a great time. <laughs> yeah. uh, best Thanks of luck with uh, Cyborg Camp tonight. Thanks. Cyborg Tomorrow. Camp tomorrow. Tomorrow. Awesome. Well, today. Yeah. Well, almost. In right. seven minutes, it'll be today. today. Seven minutes, it'll be, yeah. Thanks for your Shouldn't hospitality. If you're going to cyborg camp tomorrow, you should really be sleeping. Yeah, yeah you should, be you should sleep a lot. so your your uh, neural Lots networks can yeah. be optimized. So join us next week for still a live version, but not on location, uh, with guest uh, Diesel Boy Brett Burmeister. That's He's right. going to teach us how to brew some He's beer. He's going to bring some homebrew yeah, for the holidays. We're going to have some tasting, and he's going to tell us how to do it. A week it. after that, we're going to have Craig Schwartz. Craig Schwartz from, from Toon Lit. Toon Lit. Toon Lit. Make and we're going to announce the winner Lit. of the song contest. That's right. If we have any entries. And then on Boxing Day, we're going to have the Silicon Florist doing a podcast, kind of a tech wrap-up for in, the year. You're in tech. You're in tech. You're in tech with Rick. That's Rick, right. Rick, uh, Rick, what's his last name? Oh, you know Rick. I don't know. You know, Rick. I, I don't know. That guy, no one, knows, really no one knows him. It's a difficult time. Has anyone here ever met Rick? No. I mean, All right, everybody. I, I don't know what he looks exist. like. If you could point him out for me work. later, that'd be great. I mean, come Give on, it up Rick. for Cyborg Camp. Woo! We'll see you tomorrow. Yay, Cyborg Camp. Yay. Woo! Have a great night. Enjoy your experience. Good night, Thank everybody. you, everybody.